All right, so now we're going to talk about right triangle trig. So this is a big part of trigonometry, um, kind of how some things in trigonometry are defined. First, we need to understand some more vocabulary. So um, these are our six main trig functions. Uh, we have sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. You might notice that three of them have cos. We're going to talk about that later, uh, but these are the names. These are the abbreviations. So sine, we write S-I-N, cosine, we write C-O-S, tangent, T-A-N, cosecant, C-S-C, secant, S-E-C, cotangent is cot, C-O-T. You will want to know those. Uh, a couple other things to uh, keep in mind or recall. So recall function notation. So if I have F, right, if F is the name of some function, then this notation, F of X, is how I pronounce it, is the output of that function at x. So f is the name, f of x is the output, x is the input. Great. Why do I care about that? Because sine is the name of a specific function where sine of theta, that's how I say it, is the output of that function at theta. And so it's under, important to understand that this is a notation. It's not saying, it's, it's not saying sine times theta, just like this is not f times x. This is f of x which is the function f with respect to x. Uh, so this is the sine theta, the function sine with respect to theta. So theta is the input of that function. <clears throat> okay, next thing. Um, so here we want to think about how do we label these sides of a triangle with respect to theta. So if this is theta, how would I call or reference this side of that triangle? I would call it the opposite side. How would I reference this side? I would call it the adjacent side. What does adjacent mean to it mean? It means next to, right? And you might argue, well, isn't this side also next to theta? And that is a good argument. However, this side, because it's the longest side, has a special designation, and that is hypotenuse, right? So whatever side is across from theta is the opposite side. Whatever side is next to theta is the adjacent side, as long as that side isn't the hypotenuse, which is the longest side. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. What we're going to be dealing with today are just right triangles. So there will always be a right triangle. Uh, the reason why, or I'm sorry, a right angle. The reason why we care about these labels is this is how the trig functions are defined. So we have this thing we call SOHCAHTOA. That's kind of this abbreviation, um, or abbreviation... Maybe that's not the right word, but uh, thing that we talk about in trig when we are talking about the trig functions, and it helps us understand the relationship between the trig functions and the sides of a triangle. So the sine of theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The tangent of theta is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. That's where SOHCAHTOA comes from. So the so is sine is opposite over hypotenuse, co is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and toa is tangent is opposite over adjacent. The reason why we focus on sine, cosine, and tangent is because those are the most common of the, th of the six trig functions. Those three are the real primary ones. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent are great. I'm not trying to say that they're not important, um, but we don't see them as much when we start getting into trig applications. <coughs> However, Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so the cosecant of theta is the hypotenuse of the opposite. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine of theta, so it's the hypotenuse of the adjacent. And cotangent of theta is the reciprocal of tangent of theta, so it is the adjacent over the opposite. Now, I want to point out these are the definitions of these trig functions. So notice that the sine of theta, like if you're thinking about what does the sine of theta represent, it represents the ratio of two sides of a right triangle. That's it. It looks more complicated than that sometimes. It sounds more complicated than that for sure. But that's really it. It's just the ratio of two sides of a triangle. So let's see this in action. Uh, some basic type of trig problems. So if we want to evaluate all six trig, six trig functions for alpha. So I'm dealing with alpha in this case. Here's my lovely alpha. So I want to find the sine of alpha, the cosine of alpha, the tangent of alpha, the cosecant of alpha, the secant of alpha, and the cotangent of alpha. How do I do that? Well, I just think about my relationships. I know sine is opposite, so in this case the opposite of alpha is 5, over hypotenuse. But what's the hypotenuse? Uh-oh. Well, I could use my Pythagorean theorem. So remember, 
uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in this case, 12 squared plus 5 squared well, equals c squared. So squared. Um, but I also know, again, from geometry, if I have taken geometry, this is a special triangle, so it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. If we don't know that, then we would use Pythagorean theorem, and we would end up with the fact that the third side is 13. So the sine of alpha, then, is opposite over hypotenuse, so it is 5 over 13. That's it. Just leave it. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Remember, the cosecant is the reciprocal of that. It's hypotenuse over opposite, so that's just 13 over 5. One thing to point out then, if you know the sine of an angle, you automatically know the cosecant of the angle because it's the reciprocal. The cosine of alpha is the adjacent over hypotenuse, so that is 12 over 13, and therefore the secant, which is the reciprocal, is 13 over 12 because the secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that is going to be 5 over 12, and therefore the cotangent is the reciprocal of that, so that is 12 over 5. Any questions? Okay. Uh, I would point out, okay, I'm just going to go back real quick for one second. Um, these are things you're going to want to memorize. It's just, you use it so often in trig. Uh, similar to the unit circle. Uh, we don't need to memorize that yet, but this you're definitely going to want to know. Um, and that's where the Sokotoa comes in. It's an easy way to remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And then understanding which trig functions are reciprocals of what. We'll talk more about that later as well, but just for now I would highly recommend starting to try to memorize those. So, another type of problem, very similar. Here, we are given that the sine of alpha is 5 over 6, and we want to sketch a triangle, find the remaining trig functions. So we need to figure out, well, cosine of alpha, secant of alpha, tangent of alpha, cotangent of alpha, and cosecant of alpha. One thing I can do right away is if the sine of alpha is 5 over 6, I know the cosecant of alpha is 6 over 5. So I got one of my five answers. Boom, I'm basically done. To find the other ones, though, I need to draw the triangle. Uh, so I'm just going to draw a right triangle. It doesn't matter how you draw it, really. Just make it a right triangle, or look kind of like a right triangle. Label your right angle, and then I can pick where I want alpha to be. It doesn't matter as long as I don't make it the right angle. So I can put alpha here, or I can put alpha here. But remember, wherever you put alpha, as soon as you put alpha down, now you have designated what side is the opposite side and what side is the adjacent side. The hypotenuse is not going to change once you pick the right angle. So since this is the, well, let me back up. I'm going to put alpha down. I'm going to put it here. It doesn't matter, though. So sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. And now I need to find the adjacent side. So here I am going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's call this uh, a squared plus 5 squared equals 6 squared. So we know that this is a squared. 25 equals 36. So I know a squared equals 11. So a is the square root of 11. Now I can go ahead and finish the problem. Cosine of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to be root 11 over 6. Secant then is hypotenuse, or I'm sorry, yeah, hypotenuse over adjacent. So I can write that as 6 over root 11. Now, for the sake of this class, for the sake of your math knowledge, and for the sake of your future, it's up to you if you want to rationalize. Uh, you have probably learned in some math classes that it is important to always rationalize denominators if you have a root in the denominator. Once you get to a trig class, it's actually not as important, and in fact, once you get to calculus, a lot of times it's actually discouraged. Um, so later on in math, it's really not that big a deal. But the technique is important. And also being able to recognize when things are the same because they are rationalized or not rationalized, that is really important. So if I rationalize this, I would get 6 root 11 over 11. So either the red or the purple would be correct. Uh, tangent. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that is going to be 5 over 
root 11, or if I rationalize, that would be 5 root 11 over 11. Cotangent is the reciprocal, so that will be root 11 over 5. Any questions? All right, great work, team. Moving on. Evaluate. So we want to find the value of, remember that means find the output, um, of the following trig function at a given angle. So in this case, to do these problems, we're going to draw a triangle. If I want to evaluate the sine of 30 degrees, let's draw a triangle. I'm going to label this 30 degrees. If that's 30 degrees, this is 90 degrees, what does this have to be? That has to be 60 degrees. Oh, wait a minute, didn't we see this before? Yeah, I know this is x, this is 2x, and this is x root 3. So this is one reason why this is useful, because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 30 degrees is x over 2x, so realize it doesn't matter what x is, The sine of 30 degrees is always one half. So that's one cool thing you think about. Going back to what I was saying before, remember the what the sine or what a trig function of an angle represents is the ratio of sides of a triangle. So it doesn't matter how big or small the triangle is, once the angles are fixed, the ratios don't change. So let's draw this. Well, in order to draw a triangle with pi fourths, I need to think in terms of degrees, or it's easier right now, right? And we remember, hopefully, that if I do pi fourths times 180 over pi, and maybe we have this memorized already, but this is going to be 45 degrees. So, what kind of triangle am I drawing? I am drawing a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And I remember from when we did this, this is x, x, x root 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Since these are both 45, it doesn't matter which one I call the opposite and which one I call the adjacent. So the tangent of pi over 4 is going to be x over x. What happens whenever we divide two things that are the same? We get 1. So the tangent of pi over 4 or 45 degrees is 1. Boom. My mind's blown. I don't know about you. All right. I want you to try these two on your own. Pause the video. Unpause when you're ready to check. Uh, do exactly what we did on the last problem or just use the triangles that we drew on the last problem. All right. So hopefully you got secant of pi thirds is 2 and cosine of 45 degrees is either 1 over root 2, or if you rationalize it, it would be root 2 over 2. How do I get that, if you're confused? Uh, so first I recognize, okay, pi thirds in radians is the same as 60 degrees, so I drew my 30, 60, 90 triangle again. I labeled my sides secant of 60 is hypotenuse over adjacent, so that would be 2x over x. The x is reduced because it doesn't matter what they are, they're the same. 2x over x is just 2. Boom. Oh. Cosine of 45 degrees. Doesn't matter which 45 I pick. So they're both 45. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So x over x over 2. The x is reduced, and I get 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. Nice work.